All right, so um, I'm going to give my thoughts so far on the uh, Retron 5. Um, I've only had it for like a day, so I can't give a review or anything. However, so far, as I've been using it, I'm actually very happy with it. Um, a, lot, a lot happier than I was. And uh, I think, you know, Android has made this thing a really nice uh, nice machine. Uh, I had the Retron 3. I still have the Retron 3. And honestly, it is a piece of garbage. It's right here. I think this thing sucks. Uh, first, I had two of them. Uh, first one I got, um, the NES port uh, would display an off-centered NES game on my television. I had it hooked up to a CRT, which I don't have anymore, but it would... the, the display was off the screen, and I couldn't play it. I had to return... I had to send that one back and get another one. Luckily, the shipping was paid for by not me. Um, and then I received this one. Okay, so I played it for a little while. The NES back here requires that you use composite back here instead of S-Video and if you're using S-Video you have to swap cables back and forth and all this other stuff it does have the region switch which is that's a nice thing the region switch here but the composite out is terrible it is very oversaturated it looks like garbage and I don't know I just didn't like that so anything that comes out of the composite looks like trash um, the Genesis, now that one worked very well. That was the only thing in the system that I was comfortable playing. Um, for, in my opinion, this is basically a clone of the Genesis because nothing here I considered playable. The SNES, the sound was way too overdriven. Um, it was, sounded like there was an earthquake and I could not stand playing that. So that, these two ports were totally freaking useless. The only other thing, I have a master system converter that would fit in here. I'll show you that right now, which I actually use on the new Retron 5, which is this. You pop a card on top of this ugly thing, and it plays uh, US and Japanese games for the master system. No card games, though. But it did fit in here, and I was able to play master system games on this. Um, so, the controller, of course, was a piece of garbage. Um, it used this crap IR bullshit, and it sucked. So, it supported the original controllers. That was cool. I want to say, what was cool about this, what was better about this than the Retron 5 is that, you know, if you're hooked up to a C, you could hook up to a CRT if you wanted to, and that meant that you could use light gun, uh, light gun games. So you could use, hook up the Master System light gun, the NES light gun, uh, and, uh, Genesis light guns worked with this. So you had, as long as the uh, the uh, light gun games worked, you could play them. Whereas with this, it's HDMI only. You can't really play uh, light gun games on it. Um, but as a whole, I played this for, I used this for probably a little over a day and put it in a box. And just never touched it again. So, the only thing, like I said, that was good is the uh, Genesis with the S-Video was really good. The, oh, and in under a week the power switch broke, so I can press it down. Once I press it up, I have to pull it back up, or I can't press it down again. So it's really bad quality. Um, yeah, really poor quality uh, piece of garbage. And I've actually just stuffed it in a box carelessly because I could care less about it. I don't know why I haven't thrown it out. Okay. So, getting on to the Retron 5. This, to me, was a jillion times better than the Retron 3. Um, some people are bothered by it uses emulation as opposed to system on chip crap. I prefer the emulation over system on a chip. System on a chip sounds like crap. 
it uh, it doesn't have all the component you know it doesn't have all the um, specs in the chip the whatever the fuck and it it doesn't it accurately play games at all compared to emulation where emulation really does a lot better job than this system on a chip garbage and then when you have like crappy components inside of the thing it just outputs terrible video and crappy audio and it's just awful I had the FC twin that one actually wasn't so bad to me uh, I had it for a while it never broke or anything um, and but I only played two game two systems and uh, there were certain c games that weren't compatible you couldn't use oh yeah I also want to point out this does not play virtual racing games like that whereas this one does and I have played it on there so this is compatible with a lot of games that couldn't run on a lot of the system on a chip uh, type bullshit Famiclones. So, this one's running Android. The whole main reason I'm covering it on my channel because I do a lot of Android stuff. Um, so when I plug, I've tried out, I've tested out all my games that are of course can fit in these slots. Uh, I don't have any Famicom games or I have ordered some, but I don't have a oh, wrong way. I don't have any uh, Game Boy, Game Boy anything games. So I've ordered some, quite a few of them, and I'll be playing those or trying those out. But I have a stack of NES games, like quite high, not as high as some. Uh, sorry, I, there's a thunderstorm right now, and I see a flicker. I think I'm gonna get a brownout or something or a blackout. Anyways, although this never happened in this area. Uh, at least in my house, the whole fucking neighborhood got blacked out a while ago, and I was—I had the only apartment. I was in the only apartment that had light. That was cool, and then the, and the, the friggin' electricity in this building is awful too. Anything blows the electricity, but not a, a storm. Anyways, forget that. <sighs> so what was I getting at? So the um, this. I was trying to get at something. Okay, so every game that I played is compatible. Every single game that fits that I have that fits in these ports is compatible and plays fine. Uh, the only game I had somewhat trouble with was this. It's NHL Hockey 91, one of my favorite Genesis games. The only issue was it said it was a uh, was it said like unsupported card or something, but you would still play it and play perfectly fine. So, you know. Save states and everything worked. So, whatever it plays, it'd be nice if it was uh, if it understood the, what the cart was, but it, it plays. Um, so yeah, every SNES game I have works. I have a stack of uh, at Genesis games. I have a stack of NES games, and all of them work. And then with no problems. The only time I have a glitch is when I try to use certain cheats. That's a, some of the cheats don't pro work properly. They cause a lot of bad glitches. Uh, but some work really well and they're fun to fool around with if you're in the mood to use cheats. Uh, and I, I'm not using them more now because they're built... I, I, you have to download a file. Uh, it's like an XML file. I put it on the SD card. It has to be a certain specific folder that's already set up. You put it on the SD card and it reads uh, all these cheats and pulls them all up, fun stuff. Um, so the games look great on the TV. I did notice some of the filters really make some games look really bad. Um, some games start to look like, um, what's the word, uh, water paintings. And if you turn off the filters, they still look bad. So. Uh, that's that's kind of frustrating. Like Rogue Rash Two looks like a, a moving water painting. Um, I wish they would have less aggressive filters uh, to choose from. So you'd still have some of those jagged edges, but you know it wouldn't look like a freaking water painting. But most of the games I play looked look fine. Uh, there were some three D games from the Sega Genesis that that ended up having like these outlines on around the edges and made it look like a cartoon. So I just turned the filters off on those and it was all right. Um, so yeah, that, that wasn't the best, but with the filters off, you should, should be okay. 
uh, with the 3D games. Uh, that's on the Sega Genesis. I don't have any other 3D games on anything else. Um, let's see. So, oh, the controller. That's the one that everybody complains about. I thought I'd be able to use it. I thought I'd be like, eh, it's good enough. I can use No. No. This thing is an abomination of a fucking controller, and somebody should shit on it and shoot it and throw it out the window. It's terrible. Okay? So, just forget about this thing. It's crap. Um, it's pathetic because if they had taken the last idea for the controller they had for the Retron 3, which was basically a, a six-button Sega Genesis controller clone, and it, it had crappy wireless IR bullshit. If they took that and put Bluetooth on it, I could use that perfectly fine, even if it's made out of cheap shit. I could still use it, and it would have been fine. But they decided uh, for this block um, with a uh, micro switch thumb pad which if this was a Neo Geo clone that would have worked because Neo Geo games are optimized for something like this Sega Genesis games are not NES games are not this sucks for those there are some games I will give you there are some games that work actually better <laughs> there are very few but they work better than the original controllers with this thumb pad, but that's rare. Most of the games play like crap. I get the di diagonals get canceled out. I mean, not diagonals. If you hit a diagonal, it get it cancels out your movement. So you'll end up like, so you're just, well, here's what will happen. So I'm playing The Legend of Zelda. This is a true story. It's not actually a story. It's true. Um, so moving up, I try to move to the to the right there. Yeah, to the right. And I hit a diagonal. So when I hit right, he keeps moving up. So didn't like that. Didn't work right. <laughs> that worked that worked the same way on both Zelda games. Zelda uh, Legend of Zelda and Zelda 2. Um, did not enjoy that. So do not use this these micro switch things are it really feels really cheap, and, you know, don't use this thing. What I'm using right now is a six-button Genesis controller. Um, I'd recommend that or a Super Nintendo controller if you're going with one controller for everything. Um, it has enough buttons, that's basically it. Um, and it's, it's comfortable enough to use. It's not that hyper pile of crap. Um, so, yeah, that's that. And don't buy a second one, either. Sure as hell don't buy a second one. Um, okay. Oh, the ports being on the sides. Don't do that, goddammit. Don't do that. It blocks stuff. Your ports get blocked by things. And it's hard to plug a controller. You have to rearrange your, your uh, living room. Or your, your living room. Your friggin' um, entertainment center. Just to get the controllers to go in. So, that sucks. Um... At first, I thought this kind of thing right here was really bad because it makes things bigger, blah, blah, blah. You know, and I thought it was just simply to put the controllers over. Apparently, this is also, if you have a master system, um, that, uh, fuck, the master system converter thing that goes up top. I'm going to sneeze, by the way. Hold on one second. <coughs> well, good, nothing came out. Okay. So... Yeah, you have your master system thing up there, and you, apparently this helps the master system compatibility thingy, or whatever. I don't know, but I, I don't have that. I have that at this thing, so I didn't need that. Other people do. Uh, so I talked about the, the built-in game genie stuff, all that. All my games are compatible. I've not run into any horrible incompatibility issues. Um, the system feels sturdy enough. I mean, I think if you have a Super Nintendo, it probably... I don't know, I don't, I don't even actually even hold, hold the Super Nintendo, an actual Super Nintendo. I had a Genesis as a kid. Here's the Sega Genesis. Um, in comparison, hmm, they feel they have the same heft. 
they feel about the same. Um, I'm sure this part up here is probably the cheapest part. Um, and also people talk about the, uh, I'm going to address the cart uh, being too tight, stuff like that. Um, when I first got it, it was insanely tight. Um, it seems like you can break it in though, uh, eventually. It, it, you know, once you start putting carts in, take them out, it kind of loosens up a hair. But it's still tight. Um, so, I'm going to put in the NES carts. I mean, the NES carts weren't so bad. Um, yeah. Genesis was the worst. Um, also, because it doesn't have the region lockout that the Genesis has, which the region lockout on the Genesis is these two tabs here. People sometimes cut those off so they can play Mega Drive games. Uh, it doesn't have that, so it's a wider space. And when you put a Sega Genesis game in, it can be hard to get it in the proper spot. So it kind of scares the shit out of me because I'm not always sure if I put it in correctly. And then sometimes you hear these annoying, crunchy noises that you're just not too fond of. And if you do put it in wrong, you get an error message. And it'll actually basically tell you, you put it in wrong. Don't fuck it up. <laughs> so that's not very promising. It's not like, yeah, I want to see that message. Anyway, so Genesis is, seems to go in fine. Uh, it seems like I've, I've learned where to put it, but, you know goes in, here's hockey. Uh, uh, yeah, see some some cards that are different, you get a little scared, but went in, came out. Um, here's this master system converter. Goes in. When I take it out, I gotta take it out differently. That one was rough. That was rough. Uh, the other ones were easy, but when I was pulling it from the sides like that, it was a little hard to do. Um, so yeah, um, it's mostly the, I think it's the, well, just the Genesis that I really had a big problem with. So yeah, the car ports are fairly tight, but I have not broke anything. And they seem to be getting a little looser. And it's raining like crazy out there. And I'm lucky, because I'm inside. So I have the SD card. Oh, uh, before you go, some people seem to want to buy this so they can use flashcards. Like uh, the, uh, what's the one for the Genesis? Um, whatever, flashcards. So you can put, you know, SD cards, such as this one, into the system and put ROMs on it and stuff. That doesn't work. And they're not going to support it because they consider it to be like a piracy thing. Like, um, So if you're looking to do that, I would suggest highly get a new yacht. Do not bother with this. This is for this is best for carts. If you're interested in putting carts, I have an Ouya. It works great for old 16-bit and NES games. But if you have a lot of these laying around and you want to play them and you don't want like a million systems hooked up to a TV with wires all over the freaking place, or you don't have a, a CRT or whatever reason that you don't, or just simply want to see it coming through HDMI simply without a million upscalers and all this other shit. Uh, any, any reason you think of. <laughs> um, but yeah, don't, don't get this for putting ROMs on it. It's A, not going to work. God damn, so heavy fucking lightning, thunder, whatever you call that stuff. Both of it, actually. Anyways, <laughs> so we got the, um, the, what was I going to get? So the Ouya is really good for ROMs. You just want to plop ROMs onto a thumb drive and play a game. But like, if you have this stuff, you want to play it. Uh, that's what this is good for, not for ROMs. So, so unfortunately, you can't like you have an, uh, expensive imports that you want to play. You don't want to pay a million dollars for an import. Uh, you're going to be out of luck for that kind of thing. So, but. Um, it's great. It looks nice. Most of the games look really great on the TV. Uh, even in 720p, uh, it looks a lot better. The 720p, 60 frames per second. It's very smooth looking. Um, very nice. A lot, a lot of cool options. I like the fact that you can remap your uh, original controllers. 
uh, the buttons, you can map them differently. Um, you can use, you can pick one controller that you really like and play all the games with it. You can play all the, you could just leave your controllers plugged in, all your controllers plugged in and just pick the game. You could switch the, the controller mid-game if you don't like what you're using. So if I was playing a Master System game with a Master System controller and I didn't like its crappy D-pad, I could switch over to the Genesis controller or the SNES controller or whatever. Um, and, the, and the Master System controller does work. That was added with an update, so uh, previously it did not work, but that was remedied. Also, piggyback carts do work as well now, uh, which is probably why this works, I guess. I don't know. But, uh, you know, like the Sonic and Knuckles uh, works now. Uh, I don't have that, but I heard from multiple people and seen it working, so yeah, I would say that it works. Um, yeah, so I'm trying to see. I'm going to make sure that I get at everything. It's going to be a long video. It already is. Um, so, these dust lap thingies are fairly tight too. <laughs> I don't know why that bothers me, but it does. It's not going to affect me in any way, but it's a little tight. Whatever. It doesn't make it feel cheap or anything. The opposite is just. What am I going to do with. What's going to. Why does this bother me? Um. Of course, you, you can only have one card in at a time. Unlike the old, get old uh, Retron consoles, you can put like all the, co all the cards in that you want and just pick one. Uh, this, you can't do that. You have to have one card in at a time. That's annoying and it would be nice if that was fixed. Um, so, um, um. Oh, and uh, yeah, you can't put anything but like save states and things on this. Uh, you can update the firmware with it, you can have your save states, um, I think the saves from the carts, so I have tried, a lot of people complained about um, uh, it, <laughs> the problems with uh, saving, like some of these games, not this one, but some of these games will uh, have a save battery thing on here, so when you pop it in, it will have a save on it. And the card, the console will actually transfer the save to the console's internal memory, and then it will, um, you know, you can use it with your game. Um, and people have had problems where you transfer the, you go to transfer the save back to the cart. So if you wanted to play, say, on an actual NES or even on another Famiclone, it would be there. And instead, it actually deleted their save file, which that sucks. But um, that did not happen to me, at least with The Legend of Zelda. I tried it out, I put it in my original NES to see if, it would, if the save file was deleted. It was not. And it was just the save transfer worked. Um, with it, getting it to work, if that feature worked, it would be really awesome because you'd be able to transfer saves from one cart to another. Um, and that would be nice. Or you could just, you know, back up your save, and if the battery dies, then you still have your save. So that's cool, you can continue on using it. Um, I've never actually had a cart where the save died, and that's apparently a very big issue, but uh, I've been lucky. No dead saves. Um, let's see. I'm trying to cover everything in this video. While it's raining. Let's see. Oh, negatives, negatives, negatives. Let's get some negatives here. Because I know I one popped in my head while I was talking, and I'm trying to think of it. Um, it was uh, quite quite an interesting negative, I think. Huh. Other than the controller sucking. Hmm. Something. There's some kind of negative that uh, I was going to mention, and uh, it. Uh, oh, well, let's get to the update process. is kind of annoying. Um, it, it didn't take too long for me to update, but it was kind of annoying and complicated. Um, and I don't know how easy it would be for someone who um, 
is kind of a just person who normally just updates the console via the internet. There's no internet or anything. You can't hook it up to Wi-Fi or Ethernet and just grab it, grab a, um, an, an update. It doesn't notify you of an update. It just happens sometime, and then you have to get it from word of mouth and follow the um, link to, uh, well, you have to find where the hell the, the updates are. And then once you find those updates, you install them, and it's a long, drawn-out process, and it doesn't make much sense to me, but I did it, and it's updated, and all that fun stuff. Um, let's see. Other than that, I think there were some negatives, and I want to say them. I really want to say them, and I can't think of them. Huh. Well... Maybe it'll pop in my head eventually. And then, uh, I did have initially have some problems with the carts where when I put them in, they would not read properly. It would tell me unsupported card or no cart inserted. And I would have to insert the cart like four to five times to get it to read it. And um, uh, it seems to have gotten better now. Like I said, I broke in the cards, maybe learn better how to put them in the slots, but I don't think you should have to do that. It's just that I have, and it seems that I'm not having that issue anymore. So, yeah, I had some issues with the, with the cards. Um, I wanted to do some kind of Genesis type original hardware thing, and I have it here, and I thought of it, and I can't think of it. Yeah. Oh. More than likely, you should know that this, of course, does not support Sega CD add-ons or any kind of thing like that, you know, Famicom disc, this, that, the other thing. Um, so your bare-bones Genesis, the only add-ons, like I said, you can do Master System. I haven't tried any Japanese games. I don't know. I've not tried any Famicom games, Japanese Master System games or anything like that. Um... I don't even think it was, I don't know if it was made for that, because they have, oof, two different um, ports for those, so I don't know if that was ever, if that's possible. I see the Japanese master system, it has a bigger, bigger slot, <laughs> has a bigger uh, port here, or pin connector, whatever, um, than the uh, US master system, it's a lot different, so. I don't know if that would work, but I'll definitely get something and try it. Um, okay, so. Uh, you may also want uh, some extension cables for your controllers, your original controllers, because the cables are a little short. I think you know that one. And, uh, just to give you a little bit of extra um, slack on your cable. And yeah. So, all in all, I'm very happy with the console. It definitely needs some updates for certain things. Um, it would be nice if they made a controller, possibly. You could still, you know, hypergreening, you can still make some stuff. Please make a controller that has a D-pad. It's wireless. Possibly looks like the first controller, even if it's cheap. Even if it's made out of cheap shit, I don't care. It's, it's a wireless Bluetooth controller that I can use, and it's wireless. I would use it, um, and it's proper wireless. And this doesn't have the uh, same old thing. It's Bluetooth. Um, so yeah, that, that's about it. I think this actually carries some kind of rock chip processor too. By the way, um, rock chips. The uh, people who make those kind of budget. Uh, yeah, budget chip things. I'm tired. And uh, they, they work really well. They're actually very good processors and stuff. I don't know which one, though. I'm not sure. It's hard to find the specs on the device because, well, like, who really thinks to look up the specs on, you know, a Famiclone? <laughs> like, you know, it's not like nobody expects it to be like super powerful like 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 what am I a valley girl yes I am like 
But anyways, you, know, you don't expect this to be like a super powered device. It's just it's a Famicom that runs Android. Thank you for watching. My camera's gonna die. <laughs>